Hello, Lynn. Let's get straight to your portfolio review. First of all, your first picture I really appreciate. It's such a cute shot, and I really like how the... Um, I don't know what kind of bird it is. I know it's not a chickadee, but <laughs> I'll just call it that because I have absolutely, um, absolutely terrible at bird names. Um, however, you have the, the bird eating what appears to be a seed. And it's an action shot, even though the bird's not moving, it's still an action shot, it's dynamic, because you can tell that it's, uh, it's ready to fly off with that seed in its mouth. Very good. Of course, technically, the only trick is, and this is very hard to deal with when it comes to snow, is we have what's called blown out highlights in the background. Snow is very difficult. Because whenever you expose properly for the body of an animal, a person, a bird, the, the animal is the priority. And I always tell my photo workshop students that the background is less of a priority than the main subject. So you have flawless exposure for the bird. The bird's eye is clear. The, uh, the feathers are perfectly exposed. So, that, so you did that right. The... The only problem is a technical problem, and it's um, a limitation of, of any, almost any camera, is the blown out highlights. Now if you shoot in RAW, which not everyone does, but if you have a DSLR or a mirrorless style camera that allows for RAW shooting, you can actually rescue these blown out highlights usually by going to a highlight adjustment, and I'm using Adobe Lightroom CC, but Highlight adjustments are in every software, pretty much. And if we reduce highlights quite a bit, then you're going to be able to rescue the detail in these blown out areas. Now, because this is a JPEG photo that you sent me, and I asked, I asked for JPEGs, doing this really doesn't really, uh, affect the picture at all. We can't really rescue this area. However, if it's a raw file, then you usually can do a pretty good job of rescuing. Now, Whenever we reduce highlights like this, this is called a global adjustment. And that is a technical term, meaning that if I reduce the highlights to sort of uh, rescue this blown out area, it's also going to be reducing the highlights throughout the entire picture space, including the bird. Now, maybe we don't want that to happen. Maybe we love the exposure of the bird and we don't want to adjust it at all. That's where we have the brush tool. Now the brush tool is a little bit advanced and it's not in all editing software, but a lot of the uh, more popular editing softwares have the ability to brush on certain things. Now in the brush tool, I'm just going to reset temperature and tint. You should always reset everything before you start a new brush. So what I would do is I would take highlights down all the way and what I'm going to do now is brush on a reduction of highlights. And I'll show you what that means here in a second. Now again, you're not going to see any difference because this is a JPEG file. But I'll just show you by hovering over the blue dot, as you can see, uh, everything that I brush turns red. Now this is just a, a very simple way for the software to tell us where we've made our adjustments. If this is a raw file, we'd probably be able to rescue that. Now let me show you what happens if I go in reverse to see how what the difference is. The nice thing about brushes is that you can actually adjust certain areas at will. And you can adjust completely any way you want. The parameters are absolutely amazing, uh, all the things that you can do with a brush tool. So we're just going to ignore this and we're going to delete this because it's not really going to do anything. However, I just want to show you that because whenever we're dealing with um, people who live in the north, we have a lot of snow in the winter and it's extremely difficult to deal with snow because it often becomes blown out. And that's where raw photo, uh, raw capture comes in. Now, the only other thing is I'd love to see the feet of the bird, if possible, next time. And I often tell people just to err on the side of a little bit too much space. Because if you feel that the picture's too wide and you lose the immediacy of the face, the eyes, then just crop in. Uh, I'd prefer to see the feet of the bird, if possible, next time. Okay? Good work. 
Now, I love this shot. Uh, I have no idea where you're photographing from, but I must say this is a beautiful land if this is where you live. What I would do here as well is probably give us more definition color-wise in the flowing water. So I would still be in my brush tool and I'm going to reset all of my parameters that I did from last time. Get everything to zero. And with my brush, I'm going to increase the size of the brush just a little bit more. And I'm going to bring the temperature to blue. Now, <clears throat> obviously, the first thing you're going to say, whoa, way too much blue. Yes, I understand. But this is simply for us to understand where we are painting the brush. And we can fine tune the bluishness later. OK. <clears throat> and interestingly, we're going to add a little bit of tint as well to add a bit of green, because often when you're dealing with ice and flowing water, we also have a, a little bit of green involved. OK. So let's now fine tune the amount of blue. So we're at temperature. Actually, before that, I want to show you if you hover over the blue dot, we will be able to move you can see how I'm moving this around, and this shows you exactly where we have uh, we've made our adjustments. Okay, so let's reduce the blue to more realistic look. And let's do a before and after. Hopefully it'll show us. Okay, so <clears throat> this is your original that you gave me. And what often what happens is waterfalls in the winter, they have sort of a blah sort of a yellow pinkish look which really doesn't f lend itself well to a cold winter's day so what I tend to do is accentuate or what I feel should be the case is add blue now this is a little bit too much still so just back off I'm gonna back off the blue just a little bit and I'm probably gonna add a bit of saturation okay now you could debate the fact that that's a little bit too unrealistic. I think it's it's probably good there. But the nice thing about color, adding color or even subtracting color is that a lot of a lot of times it's purely subjective. So I would say that this is quite possible uh, as a realistic look for color. I certainly like it better than than the yellowishness of the original. Okay. So the next thing is um, looking at the overall composition. And I really love the V that you have going on here with these trees, the muted color tones. I think it's just a fab fabulous picture. Um, I would tend to want to see a little bit more down at the bottom. However, that's not really a deal breaker. So um, I think that you did well comp composition wise. But maybe next time just widen it just a touch so I can see a little bit more down here. Okay, sometimes I'm tempted to get rid of uh, slightly defocused elements on the right or the left. However, in this case, I think you did a good job at keeping these in. It's like acts as a framing element or framing device. Okay, so again, you can adjust the, uh, this any way you want. And that's the beauty of the brush tool. So I feel that that's probably good right there. Okay, good. Let's get to your next picture. Really like the the way that this um, <clears throat> that the eyes are looking at the camera here. Really well done. Um, the lighting is perfect. We have the nice blue of the shadow and the nice warmth um, of the sunlight. I think it's just uh, really well done. My only suggestion is I feel that it's a little bit claustrophobic. I'd love to see a little bit more space, especially down here. Now, I may, I may also want to see the end of this antler. So next time, just give yourself a little bit more space. And the beauty of photographing on the side of a bit wider than normal is that you can crop in later. Now, the first argument is, well, I don't want to crop in because then I'll lose resolution. Well, I understand that, but cameras are getting so good these days that even cropping in by 20%, you're still never going to see any difference if you've printed out and hang it on a wall. So give yourself a little bit more space 
and then you can crop in after. That's or or take two pictures of the same scene. That's even better. Okay, good. Let's get to your next shot. Now, the first thing I I thought of when I saw this picture is that the uh, we may we may find um, may find that the tree is distracting. But then I realized no, the the tree is integral to this picture because it looks like the uh, I don't know is this a buffalo? It, he's sort of rubbing up against the tree, maybe <laughs> scratching his head, and I think it's fabulous and. And it's an action shot, it's dynamic, and you have muted colors. I think overall it's just a gem of a picture. My only concern, and again, this is the exact same thing as before, is that we have blown out highlights. So in this situation, let's go back to our light panel. In this situation, we could do a general, it's called the global highlight reduction. So we're going to take the highlights down. Now again, it doesn't work because this is a JPEG photo, but if you were shooting in RAW, by reducing the highlights over the entire picture, it's a really quick and easy way to get detail in the snow here and down here. We're not going to do this in this picture because it's a JPEG, but that just shows you the power of the highlights tool. Again, if you didn't want to reduce the highlights of this beautiful coat of, of uh, fur on the um, on the buffalo, if, if indeed it is a buffalo. Sorry, I'm terrible with animal names. Then, of course, we would go into our brush tool. We would reset all the parameters that we used before. And we would increase our brush size. And we'd go to highlights. We'd reduce the highlights to a certain extent, maybe 90 or 80. And we would paint on highlight reduction. And this is the beauty of the brush, is that you selectively only paint the areas that need the highlight reduction, or any reduction for that matter. Okay? So that is probably a better solution than your global highlight adjustment because we want to retain the brightness of the of the uh, the coat of the animal. Okay, so that's not gonna really work right now. So I'm just gonna bring the highlights back. And uh, but anyway, really great shot, a lot of a lot of interesting drama in that picture. So let's get to your last shot and get rid of the film strip. Okay, so I feel for this picture we just need to reduce the blacks. So let's go to our light, find our blacks. The blacks in, in your shot here is, I feel it was just a little bit too muddy. Now when we reduce the blacks, we increase drama. Let's look at the before. And let's look at the after. I feel that this is a snappier picture, and it actually allows me to enjoy looking at the details of the eye and the beak a little bit more. Also, I'd probably be tempted to crop in a little bit. And mainly because I, I'd like to have less space behind the bird than in front. Something like that. Okay? Uh, Lovely work. It was a great going through your photos, Lynn. Uh, here's the film strip. We just went through that one, this one, this one, and this. So it looks like you live in a lovely environment and uh, really enjoyed going through your pictures. Thank you.